trust that you are well and uh, also hope that you had an amazing day so far. All right, so we are, today we are doing our high school English lesson on vague pronoun references, right? So vague pronoun references. And before we start, we are going to sign in and log in to aplusstudents.ca with our username as well as our password. And then we're going to choose the subject of language arts. All right, so as much as we are doing, um, it's basically high school, right? We're going to go to the chapter, or let's say the grade first of grade eight. We're going to work out of the grade eight chapter, um, the eighth grade. And then we're going to scroll down up until we get to vague pronouns references under that chapter, right? And in the lessons that we are going to be focusing on under the chapter of vague pronoun references is to identify vague pronoun references and to identify all of the possible antecedents, right? So that is what the lessons will be about under the chapter of vague pronoun reference. All right, let me see, where do I start? Yeah. So with, with vague pronoun references, right? When we write, right? So when writing, we need to make sure or we need to make sure to avoid um, writing or mentioning um, vague pronoun references, right? Because sometimes we can make mention of certain things and then the vague pronoun references is where you are we don't know who you are actually directing it to, right? So in writing, we need to make sure that we avoid vague pronoun references. And a vague pronoun reference it occurs or it happens when a pronoun could refer to more than one possible antecedent, right? So you don't even know who the pronoun is actually referring to. For example, when Lisa and Kim finally landed, she breathed a sigh of relief. So now it's like we are asking who breathed a sigh of relief because both Lisa and Kim, they were traveling, right? But now they're only saying she breathed a sigh of relief. So it's very vague because... Now we don't know who is the person that breathes the sigh of relief. The pronoun, right, within that sentence, which is she, it could either refer to Lisa or it could refer to Kim, right? So which means that the meaning of the sentence is then unclear because we don't know who breathed the sigh of relief. Was it Kim or was it Lisa when they finally landed? So vague pronoun references, right? It can be corrected in one or two ways, right? So the way we let's say we basically correct vague pronoun references can be firstly to replace the pronoun with the correct antecedent right so this is not us replacing the pronoun with its correct antecedent for example 
When Lisa and Kim finally landed, Lisa breathed a sigh of relief, right? So that is either how we can, it's like where you specifically also say who the person is that you are making mention of. Or the second option is where you can rewrite the whole sentence, right? Like for example, Lisa breathed a sigh of relief when she and Kim finally landed. This is now you rewriting it in your own words. Of course, it's your own words, but I mean, it's like rephrasing it. Because the first one says, when Lisa and Kim finally landed, she breathed a sigh of relief, which is extremely vague. But now, once you rewrite it, right, it says, Lisa breathed a sigh of relief when she and Kim finally landed. Now we know who the person is that breathed a sigh of relief, right? And a vague pronoun reference it also occurs when they, when them, there, there's, it or is, is used without its antecedent. So vague pronoun reference also occurs when they, them, their, it or its is used without the antecedent. So they say that this nail polish dried in less than five minutes. So now it's like you're asking yourself, who is the they? Right? Who are they referring to? Who are they making mention of? Because now you're asking, who are the they? Because they say that this nail polish dries in less than five minutes. Then the pronoun they within that previous sentence. The problem they is used without an antecedent, right? So the meaning of the sentence is also unclear. And when it comes to vague pronoun references, right? A problem or this problem can be fixed by replacing either the pronoun, which is missing antecedent, right? And the advertisements say that this nail polish dries in less than 45 minutes. All right, so this is basically vague pronoun reference. So I'm going to go over it again, and then we're going to go to the activities. So when writing, right, because remember when you are writing, you are either going to be creating stories or um, your writing needs to flow, right? People shouldn't be wondering what he or she is writing about, right? It needs to be clear. It needs to be concise. It needs to be straight to the point, right? If you are joining or connecting sentences or words, then the word that you use to join that, that example um the sentences it needs to make sense right so now when writing you need to make sure to avoid vague pronoun references right and a vague pronoun reference it occurs when someone um occurs when a pronoun could refer to more than one possible intercede right? It is not directly or directing to that one specific person. For example, when Lisa and Kim finally landed, 
she breathed a sigh of relief. So now it's like asking yourself, who breathes a sigh of relief, right? So when it comes to the vague pronoun reference, right, um, you can then either, so say for example, the pronoun she, which is she breathes a sigh of relief. So the pronoun she could refer to either Lisa or it can refer to Kim. So now the meaning of the sentence is unclear because we don't know if they're talking about Lisa or if they're talking about Kim. So basically a vague pronoun reference can be corrected in one or two ways, right? So if we correct the big pronoun references, you can either replace the pronoun with its correct antecedent, right? And then we can either say, when Lisa and Kim finally landed, Lisa breathed a sigh of relief, not she. We now make mention of the person's name in order to get a in order to mainly get the idea that we are specifically talking about that person, right? So you can either replace the pronoun with its correct antecedent, or you can rewrite the sentence. And when we rewrite the sentence, it will maybe go as follows. Lisa breathed a sigh of relief when she and Kim finally landed. So Lisa breathed a sigh of relief when she and Kim finally landed. Now we know we are talking about Lisa the one who breathed a sigh of relief. A vague pronoun reference, it also occurs when we have pronouns like they, them, their, theirs, it or its is used without its antecedent, right? They say that this nail polish dries in less than five minutes. So they say. So now it's like you're asking yourself, who are the they that said this, right? So the pronoun it tells, for example, they is used without the antecedent, right? So the meaning of the sentence is in a bit unclear. Like for example, we're going back where we said that all right. So the problem can be fixed by either replacing the pro the pronoun with its missing antecedent, right? And the advertisement says that this nail polish dries in less than five minutes. So instead of saying they say, we can then maybe say the advertisement says. Instead of saying they say, we can say the journalist said that this nail polish dries in less than five minutes. All right, so that is vague pronoun reference, right? And a vague pronoun reference, it occurs when a pronoun could refer to more than one possible antecedent. So now we're going to which of the following contains a vague pronoun reference? They say that diesel cars have bitter fuel 
economy than cars powered by gasoline. Let me see. They're only giving us one option. They say All right, so basically when we look at this first um, sentence, right, that contains a vague pronoun reference, it says they say that diesel cars have better fuel economy than powered gasoline, right? So basically this is a vague pronoun reference, especially when we use they say, right? So which means that if we use the word they, then it means that you are not being clear because we don't even know who you are referring to, right? So we don't know who you are referring to within that sentence. So instead of saying they say, you can then maybe use words like experts say that diesel cause a bit of fuel economy than cars powered by gasoline, right? So if you are, so when we write, we need to be direct and we need to be specific, right? Because if we're going to just, for example, say words like they say. So now it's a question that's gonna be asked, like who are the they? Who said that, right? Who is they that made mention of it? But if we either say things like experts says, um, journalists says, or the advertisement says, then we will know who to refer to, right? Mm hmm When Jake tackled Tim during the football game, his arm was injured. So when Jake tackled Tim during the football game, his arm was injured. So in this case, it is quite vague, right? So it is vague because it says when Jake tackled Tim during the football game, his arm was injured. So now it's like we're asking ourselves, whose arm got injured? Is it Jake for tackling Tim during the game or Tim who was tackled? All right. So when Jake tackled Tim during the football game, his arm was injured. So in this case, you can either rewrite the sentence in order to um, fix that pronoun, right? Or we can replace the pronoun with its correct antecedent because that is too vague. Mike, did you ask them if the flu vac vaccination is available yet? So Mike, did you ask them if the flu vaccination is available yet? So the them, right, can refer to anyone. Them can be the nurses them can be an auntie right or just a random person that they are probably asking about right so when mike did you ask them if the flu vaccine vaccination is available yet right
And remember we said that when you have either a word or something incorrect, then you can either rewrite it within the sentence or rewrite the sentence, right, with its correct pronoun, or you can replace the pronoun with its correct answer, uh, with its correct antecedent, right? All right, let's go to the next one. Read it there, one. That's, oh, we have that one. All right, let's go to next. When Lisa and her sister flew to Hawaii last month, the airline lost her baggage. And this is a vague pronoun reference, right? Because Lisa flew to Hawaii last month with her sister, right? And the airline lost her bag. So it's like asking whose bag, right? Is it the sister's bag or is it Lisa's bag, right? Because the... The pronoun within that sentence, right, is, for example, her, we need to basically change that. Or we just need to be direct, right? Because at the moment, that is a vague pronoun reference. When Lisa and her sister flew to Hawaii last month, the airline lost her baggage. So it's like asking whose baggage, right? So that is the way pronoun defense if you need to change. And we said that <clears throat> it is a vague pronoun reference. And the pronoun her, because remember, they said lost her bag. And the pronoun her could refer to Lisa's or the sisters, as I mentioned. So basically, when Lisa and her sister flew to Hawaii last month, the airline lost her baggage, right? So the first answer choice shows a possible correction of the vague pronoun reference. And then the text has been rewritten so that the meaning is clear. Because that is what they want, a clear and concise meaning, right? Not vague at all. So, the airline lost Lisa's baggage when she flew to Hawaii with her sister last month, right? And the airline lost Lisa's baggage when she flew to Hawaii with her sister last month. That is rewriting the sentence, or at least a few words or lines, um, in order to take away the vague pronoun of these sentences. Right? So which of the following contain a vague pronoun reference? Mike, did you ask them if the flu vaccination is available yet? Right? And I assume Mike did. So Mike, did you ask them if the flu vaccination is available yet? So basically in this sentence, right? 
um, when it comes to um, Mike, did you ask him for the flu vaccination yet? It's us even asking ourselves, who is the them, right? Who, do, who does Mike have to ask about the flu vaccination? Is it the health department? Is it at the pharmacy? Is it the doctor or nurse, right? Who needs to, or basically, where are you? Which store? It's like things like that that you need to ask yourself in order to try and avoid the vagueness of the reference or the summer reference, right? So in this case, he can either rewrite the sentence, right, in order to replace the pronoun with the correct antecedent, or we just rewrite and we rewrite it properly, right, by avoiding them and they. After Mr. Ellison finished performing with Mr. Watson, Maria went up and thanked him. So now it's like asking ourselves, thank who? Right? Because Mr. Ellison um, performed as well as Mr. Watson. Right? But now it's only saying that Maria went up and thanked him. Because there are two hymns. Right? So we can either rewrite the sentence in order to, you know, make more sense of it, or we can just replace the pronoun with its correct antecedent. So after Mr. Ellison finished performing with Mr. Watson, Maria went up and thanked him. Right? Was it thanking Mr. Ellison or was it thank you to Mr. Watson? All right. So we need to just try and avoid all the vague um, pronoun differences. We already have that one. The recipe says to mix the black beans with the chopped tomatoes, but Ben forgot to buy them. So the recipe says to mix the black beans with the chopped tomatoes, but Ben forget to buy them. So buy what? Was it the chopped tomatoes? Was it the tomatoes? Or was it the black beans? Right? So we need to try and avoid the vague pronoun references. Right? Because even in this sentence, right, it says the recipe says to mix black beans with chopped tomatoes. But Ben forgot to buy them. So now we're asking ourselves, what did Ben forget to buy? Is it the black beans? Or is it the tomato? Right? So this sentence is also very vague, right? Because them can refer to anything, right? It can refer to anything. It can either refer to the tomatoes or it can refer to the black beans that was that wasn't, for example, bought. And that is one of the ingredients that are missing. Right? So which means that the pronoun them could either refer to the black beans or it could refer to that chopped tomatoes that he is making mention of. Right? Then, remember we are giving you possible answers, right? 
The so second choice, right, shows a positive correction to the vague pronoun reference, right? Them has been replaced with the black beans, right? The example, the recipe says to mix the black beans with the chopped tomatoes. But Ben forgot to buy the black beans. So not the tomatoes, but only the black beans. Right? So we need to try and avoid words like them. Right? All right, let's go to our test. All right, so we're now not going to the test, right? And we now need to see which of the following contains a vague pronoun reference, right? It is vague. They say that diesel cars have better fuel economy than cars powered by gasoline or Expert says that diesel cars have better fuel economy than cars powered by gasoline, right? So we now need to select the sentence that is quite vague or that contains a vague pronoun reference. All right, so... We need to select the, the sentence that contains a vague pronoun reference, right? Which means that it's going to be the first one. Well, it says, they say that diesel cars have better fuel economy than cars powered by gasoline, right? So that is not being specific, right? It is generalizing. It is saying they. Who are the they, right? So we will say the first option. So the first option, right? It shows or it contains a vague pronoun reference. When Jake tackled Tim during the football game, his arm was injured or when Jake tackled Tim during the football game, Tim's arm was injured. So if we were to select the vague pronoun reference within the sentence, we will choose the first option. All right. The protesters want them to raise salaries and increase employment benefits. Or the protesters want the company's executives to raise salaries and increase employment benefits. Right? So we need to choose the sentence with a vague pronoun reference. Right? So if we were to choose the one with the vague pronoun difference, we would choose the first option, which is the protesters want them. Who are the them? Right? You either say the executives or you say the managers or the bosses or someone, but the them. So the protesters want them to raise, raise salaries and increase employment benefits or in or the protesters want the company's executive to raise salaries and increase employment benefits so we will go to the first option all right 
after Mr. Ellison finished performing with Mr. Watson, Maria went up and thanked him. And the second one says, after Mr. Ellison finished performing with Mr. Watson, Maria went up to thank Mr. Ellison, right? Which means that our first, the first one is the vague pronoun reference, right? Because both Mr. Ellison finished performing as well as Mr. Hudson, right? But Maria went up and thanked him, right? So him probably referring to um, either Mr. Ellison or Mr. Watson, right? But not being specific. So not being specific. So we will say it's the first one. All right. The airline lost Lisa's baggage when she flew to Hawaii. So the airline lost Lisa's baggage when she flew to Hawaii with her sister last month. Or the airline lost Lisa's baggage when she flew to Hawaii last month. We need to choose the correct one. Actually, we need to choose the one with the vague pronoun response or reference. Mm -mm -mm. So it says that the airline lost Lisa's baggage when she flew to Hawaii with her sister last month. Or the airline lost Lisa's baggage when she flew to Hawaii last month. Right. If we choose one of them, of these words, or not words, of the sentences that shows a vague pronoun reference, right? The airline lost Lisa's baggage when she flew to Hawaii with the sister last month, or the airline lost Lisa's baggage when she flew to Hawaii last month, right? Either one of this could basically be some forth, right? Because it is, in cases like this, it can be very confusing, right? But we need to identify the vague pronoun, right? All right. So we are going to choose Let's go with the first one. Yes. All right. Now we're going to identify all of the possible antecedents, right? And remember we said that <clears throat> when writing, we need to make sure that we avoid all vague pronoun references. We must rather be direct in, instead of just using he, she, they, them, and then we don't know who it is actually being referred to, right? So if it is referring to someone or something or some people, right, then it needs to be direct in the sense of it's either referring to the man, it's referring to the woman, or it's referring to both parties involved, right? So when we are writing, then we need to make sure or we need to avoid um, vague pronoun references, right? And we say that a vague pronoun reference, it occurs when a pronoun could refer to more than one possible antecedent. For example, when Lisa and Kim finally landed, she breathed a sigh of relief. Yeah, we don't know who, right? So she needs to either say, did Lisa or did Kim breathe a sigh of relief? So that is one way in which you can write it. It's either where you rewrite it and then you change a few words in order for it to be more direct. Or you can just replace the pronoun with the correct antecedent, right? 
So now we are going to select the correct antecedent of the vague pronoun within the sentence. Bette Davis, right, portrayed Queen Elizabeth I of England on screen 1955, as did Kate Blanchett several decades later. She has been the subject of numerous books and films, right? So now we need to know who has been the subject of numerous books and films. Is it Beth Davis or Kate Blanchett, right? Because now we need to say which one, who is the antecedent that we need to identify, right? And here it is that Beth Davis portrayed Queen Elizabeth the first of England on screen in 1955, as did also Kate Blanchett several decades later. She has been the subject of numerous books and films. Is it Beth Davids has been the subject of numerous books and films, or Kate Blanchett has been the, um, the subject of numerous books and films? Right, which means that if we, <clears throat> in this case, firstly, the pronoun is the pronoun is quite vague, right? So then we need to basically find or rewrite it, or let's say replace it with the correct um, antecedent, right? Which means that if we um, either replace it, right, and then we need to choose, change the word she, right? We need to then change the word she. Pardon. So if we look at the text that says, Beth David's portrayed Queen Elizabeth I of England on screen 1955, as did Kate Blanchett several decades later, she has been the subject of numerous books and films. We can then say that this text contains a vague pronoun re reference. And the pronoun she could either refer to Beth of Queen Elizabeth II of England, or it can refer to Kate Blanchett, right? So we either need to rewrite it in order for us to, for it to sound correct, or you need to replace the she and put in the correct form of interceding. After the judges posted the final scores, Carly knew victory was Right, so after the judges posted the final scores, Carly knew victory was hers. In this case, the, the sentence is not vague, right? It is not vague at all because um, they're only making mention of Carly and the pronoun hers refers to Carly, right? So the pronoun hers, it refers to Carly, right? So she knew the victory was hers. So the antecedent of hers is Carly's. Daniel wanted to add the radish and some blue cheese to the spinach, but it had already gone bad. So Daniel wanted to add the radish and some blue cheese to the spinach, but it had already gone bad. This is a vague um, reference, right? Because we don't know what went bad. Was it the radish or was it the blue cheese, right? That went, um, that went bad. Because it specifically says that he wanted to add the radish and some blue cheese to the spinach, but it had already gone bad. So we don't even know if he is talking about the radish or the blue cheese, right, that had already gone bad. It is not being direct, 
right? So which means that this pronoun, it could refer to radish or it could refer to the blue cheese. Actually, it can even also refer to the spinach that has gone bad. So we don't know because that is a vague pronoun reference. Right? It is not being direct. It is vague. All right. We're now going to do a test, right? Where it says you need to select the correct antecedent of the vague pronoun in the sentence. Steve signed up for the turkey trot with his brother and was surprised when he came in first. So we need to select the antecedent. Is it he or is it Steve? So Steve signed up for the turkey trot with his brother and he was surprised when he came in first. Right, so we need to select the antecedent within that um, sentence. Is it he or is it Steve? Right, so if we were to select the antecedent, we would then maybe select Stevie. Right, so Steve, who is the name of the person and not the pronoun he. Rebecca made mint choc chocolate chip ice cream with her sister, even though she generally prefers fruit flavored sorbet. So we need to select the antecedent. It's either Rebecca or she, right? And in this case, we will then say it is Rebecca, because she is the pronoun of Rebecca, for example. In the late 1800s, Nellie Bly was known for her newspaper reports about the poor working conditions women forced. Is it her or Nellie Bly? Right? So if we select one, we will choose Nellie Bly because her is the pronoun. And have you ever played with a Rubik's Cube? It is a 3D puzzle invented by Ern Rubik in 1974. Right? So is it it or a Rubik's Cube? So we need to select the correct antecedent of the vague pronoun in the sentence. So we're going to choose Rubik's Cube. Beth Davis portrayed Queen Elizabeth I of England on screen in 1955, as did Kate Blanchett several decades later. She has been the subject of numerous books and films. Is it she or Beth Davids? So we select the antecedent, which is Beth Davids, because she is the pronoun. All right, so that is now it for vague pronoun references, right? And we said with vague pronoun references, right? we need to basically be direct, right? When writing, because when we write, we need to avoid the vague pronoun references. And we see the vague pronoun um, reference, it occurs when a pronoun could refer to more than one possible antecedent, right? Antecedent is either the name of a person, um, it can either refer to a either a family or a person, not necessarily a family, but it can refer to a person or something that existed right before um, something else. So instead of saying he, she, they, it, which is the pronouns, we are making mention of the person's name, right? 
can be a word, the person's name, or it can be a phrase. It doesn't even necessarily have to be the person's name, right? It can either be a thing that you are referring to, right? But not the pronoun. So the pronoun is, for example, like he, she, them, it, and so on. But then that thing refers to either the person that you're talking about or it can refer to a thing that you're talking about or so on, right? And with vague pronoun references, we sometimes don't know who or what it is being referred to, right? And that is why we call it vague pronoun references. All right, so that is the end of our lesson um, on vague pronoun references. Um, I really hope that you are going to be having an amazing evening further. Goodbye.